name's Flux. I was named Flux the day after the San Francisco earthquake of 89 when I was born. I guess my parents figured that name would help me survive the times. They could have been right. In 1999, I shared my 10th birthday with a chain reaction of earthquakes, each between 6 and 8.5 on the Richter scale. It fragmented California and Southern Oregon into so many pieces, we still don't know for sure which ones sank and which ones became islands. The Nostradamus Islands. It was only off by three months. Thanks to Nostradamus, astrology has become something of a second language around here. The island I live on shifts and moves like it can't make up its mind to sink or swim. I don't know for sure whether that's the coast of Nevada out there or the bluffs of Idaho. Like a lot of islanders, I pass the time until I'm called in for work. I'm a librarian, an archival engineer. The government pays me to retrieve and organize information. The work's good. There's a lot of information to retrieve and organize these days. Too much, probably. At this point, the feds are investigating themselves about what went wrong inside the military and the police state right before the turn of the century. Don't ask me, they don't tell me much. They just fly me in and fly me out. going back for? Pre-millennium earthquake data. Yeah. Me too. Do you ever, uh, do you ever, you know, want to warn people? What happens, happens. You don't change it. But I mean, did you ever meet someone that, that you had to tell because you wanted them to survive? This company does not condone attachments. You should know better. Keep talking that way, I'll call you in. She's right. Forming attachments always eats up more real time than anybody realizes. She's probably a tracer. Tracers are drive time specialists. They track down and complete the unfinished missions of the overextended. When workers lose track of their real time limits, they're reabsorbed into the dream time and they stay there. It's an occupational hazard. Sooner or later, a tracer will show up and finish the work. They're mop up artist, search and seizure crew. Flux Adams, for debriefing. Flux Adams? Hello, Flux. Your mission has been approved for drive time travel on the service. Our interview is being recorded for voice print verification and security clearance. Please complete the following statements. My occupation is... Archival engineer. Today's date is... May 1st, 2023. The place and time I have selected is... A Seattle 1999 Halloween. The purpose of the visitation is... Retrieval of video footage for archival purposes only. The nature of the video footage can be best described as... Police intervention in civil affairs.
requested the maximum amount of real time permitted on this service, which is 44 minutes. Do you understand your time limit? Uh, yes. Question. Does this service count the time used in dreams as real time? Real time does not exist in dreams. However, company ethical policy limits your access to three dreams. Each additional dream costs you 22 minutes of real time. Once you surpass your 44 minute limit, you are reabsorbed into the dream time with no further access to real time manifestation, past, present, or future. Is this clear? Yes. On behalf of Retro Travel, I wish you a successful mission and safe return. Do not become bewildered by the surfaces. In the depths, all becomes law. to this. Seattle, 1999. It's a peculiar time and place. The government had just begun its experimental triage of economic, political, and police support. The inner cities, urban villages showing little return on federal investment adopted a debit economy. Cash disappeared. That felt good. The feds maintain marginal political control by broadcasting simulations of street anarchy and police enforcement in neighborhoods where there were in fact no riots and no police at all. No go zones is what local rebel media called them. NGZ was also the name of the government broadcast station, which shared airtime with 500 other television channels. NGZ created jobs for the vets suffering from Gulf War syndrome. My body temperature just jumped. I'm getting close. I'll have to go shopping. That always helps me get my feet on the ground. Besides, I always look so lame in this jumpsuit. That might be a dream worth catching. Interactive video fax programming on the televisionary terrorist net web. Hi, Beauty and Truth fans, and welcome to the neural telethon pledge drive of the televisionary terrorist net web. Brought to you by Rosicrucian Coca Cola, Telepathics Anonymous, and the history of American terrorism in your dreams. We're coming to you live like a parasite through the viral magic of the holographic video faxes that we're even now coaxing from just north of your medulla oblongata. The world is young, your soul is free, and something very good is going to happen to you if you buy our holy propaganda, which we affectionately call infomania, but which you might like to call the healing pathology of your higher brain. I'm your host for the Neural Telethon and for every show on the Televisionary Terrorist Network. My name is Rob Bresny, and I'm proud to announce that this is a perfect moment. for the next million perfect moments and we promise to overstimulate your imagination and convince you that all you have to do to achieve the impossible is attempt the absurd. The Neural Telethon Pledge Drive is not just a fabulous series of shows, but a sacred commercial based on the story of your life where the names for a change have not been changed to protect the guilty. 
who says you can't have it all. The telegenetically engineered hormonal airwaves of the televisionary terrorist net web will change your life forever with amazing hybrids of cyberspace and dream time, feral predictions, janitorial sorcery, revolutionary new crimes that don't break any laws, and a radical form of televisionary therapy that could make you one of the most creative people who has ever lived. The televisionary terrorist net web is live, hot, and totally uncensored, as raw as the law allows, and more. The televisionary terrorist net web says exactly what you mean. It does exactly what you feel. It showed. Can you fix it or something? Fix it. Crucifix it. Media literacy is up, up, up in the zones. They'll see right through this. You turn on your video switch. Fuck you, I want you to see who the hell I'm talking to. Fuck you. It's too early to be seen. What do you want me to do? If you can't find something dangerous to shoot, make it up. <laughs> or do it right. Go south side and shoot the real thing if you have to. Stage a riot. Anything. You are one sick son of a bitch, Seamus. Yeah? You don't sound so like yourself. Listen. I'm under the gun for riot control and security enforcement action. The censors are nervous about there not being enough on-the-air security, if you know what I mean. 20 damage for last night's fiasco. Come up to broadcast, and we'll triple it. People are desperate to believe that there is something meaningful happening right now. Cash has been phased out. Corporate Christians are back in office. With Jesus in a sack lunch. Even Rush Limbaugh's running for president. Anything else? <laughs> yeah. You sound terrible. Get some sleep. You didn't shoot that. <laughs> Pretty kiss ass man. Oh. <laughs> So, what are you gonna do? I don't know. I guess I'll go south side and scan for riots. I can't believe you shot that. I can't believe you're still shooting riots. You know, bad news isn't the only way to rack up debits. Yeah, well, it's the only news that sells. It's the only news that sells. God, vid. You sound just like an NGZ commercial. I did think you used to have an imagination. It's a dangerous world out there, and we know it's not getting any safer. Government statistics show a steady rise in violent crime in all South Side and Central City districts. For the growing safety of your family and loved ones, we offer significant discounts for home entertainment centers and online workstations. From the local home base of your family, to the non-local lifelines of global online communications, we at NGZ support your rights for more contact and less danger. Why go out when you can stay in? This community service announcement is sponsored by your local NGZ network. We return you now to your regular program.
Zola, what did you mean when you said I used to have an imagination? <laughs> well, you're a smart guy, Vint. But it takes more than an intellect to see through yourself these days. I'll see through myself. Why is this starting to sound like a Telepathics Anonymous meeting? Why do you have to be so critical? <laughs> You're right. Explain it to me. Why do people have meetings to read each other's minds? You apathetic fuck. <laughs> it's not about reading minds. It's about real connection. Telepathy isn't a fluke or a disease. It's a sign of life. But you can't have telepathy without a soul. Without an imagination, no soul. You with me? No imagination, no soul. No soul, no telepathy. And without that, mass media pretty much owns you. What did you dream about last night? I keep doing this. I keep coming back, but it never goes back for me. It's just one foot in front of the other. Crossing the threshold, leaving it all behind. Walking from one room into the next. It's like the old spiritual says, my hands are complicated, but my feet just want to go. I'm just passing through, working from old maps, winding a thread of memory through the rooms, hoping the structure holds. It's so easy to just float, like those people in the Dead Sea, laying down in the water, floating on a solution of salt. You can only dissolve so much salt in water. It reaches a saturation point, above or below there. It's either unsaturated or super saturated. If you heat it up, you can dissolve some more in there, cool it down. Now it's got more than it's supposed to hold. Now it's looking for a seed to grow around, to grow solid just to break the tension. Everything's heading back towards the saturation point, but it's like crossing the equator. It's not always easy to know when you've crossed over, unless you're looking from the outside. <laughs> hi. Hi, hi, Mom. Oh, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I mean, everything seems to be fine. Um, I just got this great uh, studio on the south side. It's in an old condo. Uh, this is my room. It's, you know, it's all right. And, um, I'm getting settled and I'm taking some classes online. Um, I'm studying astronomy and uh, space colonization and post-capitalist polemics. Nobody knows what's going to happen next, but it's going to happen anyway, isn't it? I saw a riot today from outside my bedroom window. I'm fine. Uh, my building is a security building. There are surveillance cameras and everything, so it's totally safe. Plus, the riot police came in like five minutes, so everything is okay, but...
Zola, it's me. Look, please, pick up the phone. Uh, anyway, I'm not coming home tonight. I'm, I'm fine. I just need some time to think things over. It got pretty crazy on the south side tonight. I, I know you don't want to hear about it, but it got crazy. I think I'm going to, I don't know, check out the weathered wall and then check into a motel for the night. Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. I love you. Cop dreams. They all wanted to be TV cops, and that's just what they ended up being. Somewhere it all ran into a wall and no one predicted what came out on the other side. The main mechanism of control became the production of the illusion of control. Power wasn't coming out of the end of a gun, it was coming out of a wish machine. The cops you saw on TV were like the live chessmen French kings used to play with. Celebrants of power empty charismatic vessels embodying a vaporware social structure through a collective act of faith, sinking their shining teeth into an endless stream of blood sacrifices. As the police turned into performance artists, the real security jobs were taken over by unglamorous technicians operating completely in the dark, walled in by an impenetrable investigative bureaucracy processing the warehouses of surveillance material being produced by everyone recording each other, trying to stay on top by the sheer quantity of intelligence. The expert systems set to the task of making sense of it all developed their own styles and personalities as heuristic devices and formed another level of virtual bureaucracy, justice by committee, that probably controlled who lived and died. Hard to say. The whole unadvertised structure of social maintenance that went on underneath the TV trials and the riot reports. I don't know, it all got kind of hazy for me after that. I suppose it worked after a fashion, but no one was really in control, and the illusion was wearing too thin for some people. Inside your dream pillow now, televisionary, teaching you how to use your nightmares to become rich and famous, if that's what you want. James, dream cop, I'm percolating up from the ground beneath you, bringing you the Gnostic African Buddhist music of the ever-growing roots, if that's what you want. Like a tick in the navel of the seven-headed, ten-horned beast of the apocalypse. I'm even riding on the back of tonight's satellite transmission from CNN, MTV, CIA, and UFO. I'm all around you, if that's what you want. So, what do you want, anyway? Do you want me to say a prayer for you? A prayer, then, it is. Oh, God of gods. God beyond all gods, girlfriend of God, teacher of God, goddess who invented God. Rescue this dream cop James from his darkest secrets and help him see the difference between self-destructive self-control and liberating self-control. Awaken in him the power to do the half right thing when it's impossible to do the totally right thing. Arouse the wild woman within him. Oh, goddess, guide this beautiful dreamer, James, to realize that he is completely different from what he thinks he is and more exciting than he can possibly imagine. Give him a license to bend all laws, rules, and traditions that keep him apart from the things he loves. And oh, goddess, give this beautiful dreamer the right to push his own buttons and unbreak his own heart and right his own wrongs and sing his own songs and be his own wife and save his own life.
This is Death Sergeant Derek McMurphy of the Seattle Police Department with a message from Mr. James Houlihan regarding his test results. The good news is that you passed the physical. The bad news is that you failed the written. It says here that, uh, hold, hold on. Hey, Bill, Bill, where are you going with those? Yeah, no, 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 not that kind. The bear claw, okay. Well, it says here that uh, this was your second attempt at the written exam, which means you can take it one more time within 30 days. If you still want to be a police, if you have any questions, please refer them to the death sergeant on duty. Thank you and goodbye. Go away. <sighs> Moses in a half shell. Come back later, I'm busy. This won't take long. Okay, talk to me. Are you the only one listening? Nobody up here but us Republicans. Well, there was another riot on the south side again last night. Riot control really flew off the handle, it looked pretty bad. Any of my stringers show up? Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Wedge or Sid? Vid? V Vid has some action? Oh, Vid definitely shot some action, yeah. Thanks, James. You're a good cop. Good enough to put in a word for me down at the precinct? Did you pass the test this time? No. But I can still get in, right? I don't know, James. That's putting me on the spot. Well, I could maybe, uh, Keep an eye on Vid for you. You do that. But do it undercover style. Leave the uniform at home. Take a walk, get some air, there's to spare. Met a man, old guy, fishing through a garbage can. Caught the stench, saw the sight of his breath in the lamppost light. Points to a bench, I'll have over there, he said. Offered his hand, a patch of dry land with a glance, he understands me. Hand to mouth, do without. Sleep is not always the most restful option. Yes, I need to be free from this prison of my own design. The mind's got a living roll full of clouds. Day to day, walking blind, it's a cliche. Like, talk out loud, pool of blood on the street. Hesitate, feel alone in a crowd. It's a clue, a red light, and pretty soon, I can't remember mine. Distress, do your best, turn the earth, plant the seed, you know me, I help you, we can wait for pursuit, coagulate on a thread, we are ripe, diffuse a victim archetype, cause utility's dead, humility shot futility in the head.
I'm a stringer. I just shot a south side riot. The cops really lost control this time and hurt the people. I've got it all on disc. I usually sell to NGZ, but I can't do it anymore. I'm editing, I'm editing this for Taz broadcast. Consider this a message, consider this message a press release. Welcome to Telepathics Anonymous. We're tuning into a lot of stress and confusion out there among all you enigmatic, charismatic, melodramatic creatures. And you are tuning into our stress and confusion. We know the rage you rage because we rage too now that we know that everyone loves everybody else for the wrong reasons and that everyone who believes in the devil is the devil. But together we may have the cure for what's eating away at our happiness. We can pretend to be crazy in order to get away with doing what's right. And we can love our enemies in case our friends turn out to be jerks. And we can unhex the black magic we've practiced on ourselves. And we can kick our own asses. And we can unleash the most primal scream that we have ever primaled before. I am a telepath. I am addicted to nonverbal communication. And I need your help. I hear the newcomers snickering, and believe me, I know what you're thinking. But the rest of you know what I mean. We are addicted to telepathy in a society that does not believe it exists. And I need your help. I am addicted to real connection between people in a world that is rapidly disappearing into virtualized online communities and I need your help. Yeah. I am addicted to timeless mind links between strangers when our government practically pays us to stay indoors, oh. cocoon yeah. against a so-called dangerous world, and I need your help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I am addicted to my wildest imagination during a time when artistic genius has sold out to corporate advertising, oh, yeah. tyrannizing our minds with images more beautiful than most of us can even imagine on our own. Oh, and we need each other's help. Yes. Right. Yes. I am addicted to my dreams in a culture that refuses to accept anything not immediately categorizable, yeah. genre fried yeah. and homogenized, and I need your help. Yeah. I am addicted to soulful worship between consenting adults yes. in a universe that is far too vast for just one God. Yes. And I need your help. Yeah. Like many of you in this room, I am a telepath. We are addicted to real communication between souls in an age where the soul dead are in power, mm -hmm. legislating their laws and creating their standards, and we need each other's help. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a telepath, and I need your help.
I was online heavy, probably from the time I was six or seven. You didn't have a face online, or an age, or a gender, or a name if you didn't want one. People picked up on that right from the start. There was always a definite underside. All the sleaze without the messy physicality. Perfect for some people. Then came the sensor scans, the security protocols, the whole crypto survivalist movement. It was a festival sometimes online, a masquerade at eternal midnight, with everyone throwing off mask after mask and never getting to the bottom. Personality reconstruction software evolved to counter the psychological screening programs that were part of everyone's personal security system. It got so involuted, rooted through so many layers of abstracted desire, you weren't really talking to anybody anymore, just looking at your own face in the monitor. I don't know. It was like that for me anyway. see your eyes, motherfucker.
to work with me on something, you're not going to believe what I shot in Southside. I don't want it in the house if it's violent. When we're through with it, it's not going to look violent. Violence is violence no matter how you cut it, Vid. A witty voiceover, some special effects, a little rock and no, roll, and it's still no, the same no, dance. Not, not this vision. time. Not this time. I've got this great idea of making people aware of how they scapegoat. No. God! Do I smell a fundamentalist virus in the building? And once infected, is there a cure? I wish you were a little more infected. <sighs> then work with me on this. You can script it. Do the voiceover. You've got a great voice. Zola, it's been so long since we've worked together on anything. Does it have violence and riots in it? <sighs> yes! God, but it's not the action. It's how you interpret it. <sighs> Do you ever feel like we're worshiping totally different gods and these gods are at war? It doesn't matter that you and I love each other. These gods hate each other's guts. How do you say this? Oh, God, even if it's true, so what? I admit we're drifting, but we'll come back around. Trust me on this. I don't love what you do anymore. There used to be a time when it didn't matter, but it does now. What you do comes out of who you are, and if it doesn't, you're living a lie. I need to know, Vid. Is this who you are, or are you living a lie? You fell in love with me, not with what I do. I'm not what I do. Exactly. But what you're doing is so much less than who you are. Then help me with this. I need to think about it. I've got to go. I've got to go shoot a poetry slam. Okay. Hermes. Hermes. You rang. One of my stringers, Vid, was seen shooting riot control in South Side. I need that disc tonight. Here's his address. It's 5533 Corson Avenue South. Code red, right? Orange. Orange with a bit of red? Just use your discretion. But I need it tonight. I don't want to control myself. This always feels so silly. It's like walking into somebody else's TV show. I've got this mission that's the only real connection I've got with where I'm really from. And as soon as I start talking about it to someone, it sounds kind of silly even to me. I don't even believe me anymore. Hi, I'm from the future. Lend me a hand. Any of these choices, any of these dreams, any of these doorways, it's all the same. I'm just a jumper wire, a spark in the whole slowly grinding explosion. Traveling, just going forward, connecting to something. I always feel like the crow that flew 500 miles straight over mountains and valleys to fly straight into a church bell and die. And people walk out of their doorways, look around and go back inside.
How's life? What are you doing here? You're in my dreams. I was in your dreams? No, I've seen you somewhere before. Southside at the riots today. The outside, I'm from the outside. What are you, a cop? What do you mean the outside? How did you get in? Is this a joke? Zola sent you, Zola did this. I'm not a cop, I'm a librarian. Look, just pay attention and relax. Sometimes it's better if you don't understand. In the year 2013, a phenomenological shift occurred in the medium of time. It reached a sort of hypersaturation point and collapsed in on itself, forming what we call the drive time. It's like time with a major memory upgrade. You're for real. If you take the aboriginal concept of the dream time, the drive time is how we travel back and forth between the dream time and the daytime. Seattle, 1999, it's like an off-ramp. Why are you here? Routine recognizance mission. I'm trying to retrieve some unedited video footage. Unedited video of what? Of police intervention in civil affairs. Do you have any footage like that? Footage. Uh, it's called action. And even if I did have some, why would I give it to you? God, this is crazy. I need it more than you do. Well, give me some time to think about it. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of time myself, so I'll see you later. You open the door for anybody? What? No surveillance here? Hey, slow down. Who are you? I'm sorry, this is really strange. I'm not used to somebody to just opening the door and being there. I'm from Hermes Transport. Seamus from NGZ sent me to get a video disc from Vid. You must be Vid. Are you Vid? Yeah, I'm Vid, but I normally fax my work in. What is this all about? Apparently. You were seen shooting riot control in Southside. And Seamus needs that raw, unedited action tonight. Like now, man. You're NGZ. You've been following me. I'm not NGZ. I'm just messenger detail. Yeah? Well, you tell Seamus I don't work for him anymore. Tell him if he needs action for tonight's broadcast, he still has time to set his VCR from Melrose Place. Hey, televisionary. This is the chief anchor slot over at Taz Webwork. Thanks for your offer. We love Video Angel sending us telegenetically mutated riot footage. So send away. For the next 24 hours only, our video fax number is 781-5691. Now we want to return a favor. One good turn deserves another. So tonight, when the moon slips into the sign of the crab, the menstrual temple of the funky grail invites your exclusive video participation at the Odd Fellows Temple on Capitol Hill. Just tell them your name is Puck. They know you're coming. I might be Puck. How good are you at invisible? You never saw him. <laughs> the menstrual temple of the funky grail. What is it? Where did it come from? How badly do you need it? The menstrual temple of the funky grail 
is a pack of anonymous celebrities that stages secret performances designed to burn heaven to the ground. The Menstrual Temple of the Funky Grail, sponsors of sex riots, a safe and orgiastic alternative to elections, working to liberate the political force of the female orgasm. The Menstrual Temple of the Funky Grail, fighting to overthrow the global genocide of the imagination. The Menstrual Temple of the Funky Grail, a gang of multinational televisionaries conspiring to cancel apocalypse through the erection of a global network of menstrual huts. Population. It's overpopulation by the wrong people. And congratulations. You are a monstrously beautiful soul too big for your own body. And you finally realize you are completely different from what you think you are, and more exciting than you can possibly imagine. In other words, you have achieved a horror of imitating yourself, and you are ready to submit your life to a little multiple choice test, which goes as follows. How does it make you feel when I command you to confess profound secrets to people who are not particularly interested? Does it make you want to, A, Cultivate a healthy erotic desire for a grotesque old person? B. Help your friends glamorize their pain? C. Burn down the dream house where your childhood keeps repeating itself? D. Visualize Jesus Christ at the moment of orgasm? Or E. Steal something that's already yours? of course, is the right answer. But then how could you have known? Despite all we've been through here today, you were too busy worrying on deep subconscious levels that you're still a nobody. 
But relax. Don't worry. Remember that. Yes, on facts. Midnight tonight. It's a date. Friend of God, teacher of God, God is who invented God. We pray that you will cast a gorgeous love spell to nullify all bad spells that have ever been cast on James the Dream Cop. Remove, banish, annihilate, and laugh into oblivion all jinxes that have clung to him, no matter how long he suffered from them. And even if he's grown accustomed to their ugly companionship, conjure an aura of protection around this televisionary so that he will receive an early warning if he's ever about to attract another jinx into his life. Amen. Om. And hallelujah. Goddess of the menstrual temple of the funky Grail. O oh, goddess, you wealthy anarchist burning heaven to the ground, we pray that in these mysterious moments you impregnate the subconscious mind of this televisionary with his own personal, ecstatic, utterly relaxed version of the drive time, removing all blockages to his divine charisma allowing an abundant flow of lyrical logic and orgiastic lucidity to flow through him, purging him of the wishy-washy wishes that distract him from his white-hot burning desires. Amen. Thank you. 
Hello, Miranda. I'm glad you're listening. My story is neither simple nor easy to hear. This is for your eyes only. Over 50 years ago, in the summer of 1947, the Norwegian government discovered a completely operative, remote-controlled fleet of saucer-shaped vehicles in the mountainous caves high above the fjords. These flying saucers were manufactured by the Nazis as Hitler's final trump card for staging an outright extraterrestrial attack on the United States of America. At the critical moment, Hitler's air force would intervene, save the world from alien invasion, while transforming himself into the archetypal hero of a new age. Fortunately for all concerned, this never happened. Yet the idea itself continued in the minds of those in power as a compelling force for social control. Over the last two decades, several world governments have joined forces in developing sophisticated spacecraft and space weaponry as part of a strident yet stealth militarization of outer space. The moon is already militarized as a test site. Miranda, you can turn this program off at any time. What you are about to discover may disturb you, yet it is nevertheless quite real. These governments, which must remain unnamed, are preparing to stage an extraterrestrial attack on an American city where mass media coverage is sophisticated and pervasive enough to broadcast the invasion worldwide. I have reason to believe they are choosing Seattle. These flying saucers are very impressive. They will look real, they will sound real, they will act real, but they are not real. They are machines designed by a few men to control the fates of humanity. The government leaders behind the invasion are convinced what they are doing is best for the people. They are wrong. They are out of control wrong. My purpose is to alert as many conscious people as possible to this illusion of reality. So when the flying saucers come, we will not believe them. Miranda, warn your friends. It will look very, very real. And it will be a pack of lies. I know I just talked to you yesterday, and I know you're busy and tired, but um, I just found out some information online. I met a man who told me that the government are colonizing the moon. He told me that they're testing weapons there and that that's why nobody has been there for 20 years and that that's why nobody's talked about Star Wars since Reagan. And he told me that the effect of the weapons testing there looks just the same on the moon surface as the craters look, so nobody really can tell that it's happening. And he told me that there are many governments involved in this testing and that they're planning a surprise attack on the public or something. And I want you to tell me what that means, Mama, what a surprise attack on the public means, because I have a feeling that you know about this and that Dad knew about this too and that he didn't like it and that that's why he's not here anymore. And, um... I want you to tell me what you know about that. I'm asking you to.
what it used to be like. I beg the dead girl next to me, breathing moss, breathing, yes, but she dead. You can smell it on her, dead. Not like you think it is. Never like you think it is or ought to be. Her hair, long as fire. She can't stand the idea of having them hands anymore. She not touching me and they fucking her up the ass just like they fucking the moon her up the ass with their weapons. Testing in the moons behind, behind the moon. They're testing weapons, filling up her belly, my sky. With them, metals and moltens. They are the Martians, the martial artists who cannot see Mars' face, cannot hear Mars words, but they know that they don't know nothing. NASA don't know nothing. Ask Richard Hoagland. He's seen. What have you seen? Them flying saucers, the craters on the moon. They look like they could be asteroid collisions. They look like they could be bombs. I know that I have heard it said. He said somewhere that they can't kill the spirit as long as what is it you have. You have your own mind. As long as they can't kill the spirit, you have your own mind. You have your own mind. Dreaming a language only I understand. She is there holding my hands with her mouth open. She is holding my hands with her mouth. She's there with my hands. I, naked, full-bellied in streets, in heavy rain, stood and opened wholly under sky, opening onto or into me, under loons, call going out forever, going on a little longer than you think it should. I stood and licked her, moon, clitoral, mouthful of memory in her. She has all our memory, and all our memory has her, all our story. She, moon, mirror, like my mama, my mama's womb, the one I lived in, the one I live with, now my own belly moon. I was born on the third day, and he rose again from the dead. I was tucked away later in this hole, in this all damp darkness. I have seen fear, I fear I have seen the future. And you are a woman in it, with your mouth open, showing things hidden behind hidden things. They are testing 
building weapons behind these things. An invasion, a day will reveal an invasion descending and ascending on these moons and mountains. A day will give birth to an illusion, a lie that is going to look real. Help. Oh. No, 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 no. Thanks. <sighs> I can script it. What, script what? You said I could script the piece. I'm standing just outside the door, windows passing the frames, not the glass, not the kind I've seen before, shaking in the wind like bone dice on green felt. Everybody cheers, everybody's singing, and I, I know this song, it's been running through my head for years, but I can't get a hold of it now. I can't string it out in sequence, each note hiding behind the one before it. I can see myself in the mirror, but I don't think he can see me, like I'm standing at the foot of a ladder. There's a chair at the top, and I look at it, and I, I know why, but I'm still not moving. Chairs and ladders swinging slowly out across the water. There's so much space inside. There's a wagon of some sort passing on the street below, and it's dragging a horse behind it, the music bouncing off the hills. None of them have ears. How can they be singing? Why am I even listening? The air seems stacked with the movement of trees like windmills, propellers of some kind of flying machine, dense and spiraling downwards. Giants sleeping stretched out under the sky. The moon keeps swinging around and around, and it seems like it can just do that forever, but then it rolls in close and just stays there, hanging at the closest point to Earth like an egg at the bottom of a bowl, wanting to go right through, right through to the center of the Earth. Bad time, James. Look, I'm sorry to bar you like this. But... That's all right. What happened to your uniform? I don't want to be a policeman anymore. I don't want to spy on people. I just, I just want to be, I just want to be a good, uh, a good man. <laughs> You're already a good man, James. <laughs> Maybe the best good man I know. The best good man I know. Maybe better than you'll ever know. <laughs> well, well, something really weird happened tonight. What happened? I, I can't talk about it just yet. I... But one thing I can say is that there's there's real evil out there in the world, Seamus. And I couldn't see it before. But now I can. What do you see? I see the devil. I am the 
the devil. You are the devil. Everyone who sees the devil is the devil. I'm not the devil. You used me. Why did you use me? Because you were there. I did use you. You used me. Everyone uses each other. Th that's the way of the world, James. Video piracy is alive and well in Seattle. This is Antero Ali, your viral host for tonight's special broadcast on the TAZ Webwork. We're transmitting live from one of Seattle's beautiful seven hills with video facts programming from two anonymous stringers with something to say about anthropology. Five, four, three, two, one. For as long as there have been tribes among people, one curious ritual persists to meet the primitive human need for sacrifice. The ritual of the scapegoat, or the practice of vicarious suffering. From the ancient goat man god ritual sacrifice to the goddess, to modern day celebrities shot down for impersonating the gods, scapegoat rituals have bonded and divided tribes from the beginning of time, yet no other ritual is more misunderstood. There is a collective need to transcend human pain and suffering. Scapegoat rituals satisfy this primitive need by transferring the accumulating pain of a group or tribe onto an object, an animal, another human being, and entire races of human beings in a powerful act of contagious magic. Like a virus, it is contagious when it spreads upon contact. As the forms of these rituals change, their underlying function remains the same, to provide a tribe with a vehicle or medium to pour their demons into. A tribe's demons are made up of the accumulating force and pressures of their people's fears, guilts, taboos, and hatreds. A scapegoat is any object, animal, or human being that looks and acts like the demon that tribe is seeking release from. Scapegoats don't have to be animals or human beings. Here in the 21st century post-information media age, modern scapegoat rituals have been smoke-screened and mediated by and through the mass media itself. Mass media, the modern sacrificial arena. Mass media, our most obvious and universal scapegoat for these times. Mass media, our first choice for a scapegoat to sacrifice now. Tell your friends, scapegoat the media, turn off the TV, break trance, make trance, break out of your cocoons, get back into the streets, talk amongst yourselves, Take back the airwaves, create your own media, refuse to consume more media than you are producing yourselves, scapegoat the media, turn off the TV, turn off the noise, make your own music, turn off the TV, turn into the TV, walk into the light, turn on the TV inside you, televisionaries, turn on your visions, turn off your hate, Turn on your sounds. Turn your apathy upside down. Televisionaries, we are not the program. Televisionaries, we are not the problem. Televisionaries, this program is changing. Televisionaries, the future is now. Televisionaries, the future has already happened. Hi, Beauty and Truth fans, and welcome to the Televisionary Oracle, brought to you by the Menstrual Temple of the Funky Grail, Telepathics Anonymous, and your mom. I'm your host, your mom, and I'm proud to announce that this is a perfect moment. This is a perfect moment because you have taken the first step in a marathon ritual which could lead to the end of your amnesia. 
At this perfect moment, televisionaries, you have somehow managed by fabulous accident or blind lust to tune into the televisionary oracle, proving that you're ready to recover your repressed memories of your glorious origins and ready to know again the 13 perfect secrets from the beginning of time. Welcome to the end of your nightmares, sex and death fans. The world is young, your soul is free, and a naked celebrity is dying to talk to you about your most intimate secrets right now. Just kidding. In fact, the world is young, your soul is free, and any moment now you'll begin to feel horny for clouds, trees, salamanders, toasters, and even the ocean itself. Televisionaries, why should childbirth be shown regularly in prime time anyway? How is it possible that welfare mothers will one day rule the world? And why am I so sure that sooner or later each of us will be a well-rounded, highly skilled, incredibly rich socialist with lots of leisure time and an orgiastic feminist conscience? Stay tuned to the televisionary oracle and all will become mystically clear. My beloved friends and monsters, understand me or go to hell. I love you. I love you, God damn it! I love you more than I love you. And I'll prove how much I love you if I have to kill my ego to do it. You're ready, friends. You're ready to stop living out the lies of the necrophiliac journalists and the schizophrenic presidents and the flirtatious pop nihilists who are conspiring to rape your memories and genocide your imagination. It is the perfect moment to put your faith in the one true crime of love from the future. At this perfect moment, I am the most beautiful anger slut in all the land, and so are you. I am the tantric messiah, teacher of permanent orgasm, so are you. In my rock video, you and I are already in charge. I am the psychic judge of the invisible government of bloody Disneyland, and so are you. I am the sacred janitor of the United Snakes of Rosicrucian Coca-Cola. And so are you. Televisionaries, we will succeed where the paranoids have failed. We will take back the airwaves from the entertainment criminals. And when you're too well entertained to move, screaming is good exercise. So please scream along with me right 